Okay, we'll start with this. Shakur Stevenson had this to say. He says, I would wash Leo Santa Cruz at 130. My style is too perfect for him. He's quoted as saying, I want to fight Leo Santa Cruz. I hear he's supposed to fight Javante Davis, but I don't think the tank can make 130. His last fight was at 135, and it was a struggle to make 135. I don't think that he can make 130, so I don't see that fight happening. I see them talking about it, but I don't really see that fight happening because Leo Santa Cruz said he's not fighting him at 135. That the fight has got to be at 130. He just said that in an interview. He said that the fight would have to be at 130 because at 135 it's taking away from his advantages to win the fight. I think that I'll wash him, Stevenson said. I think that my style is too perfect for him. I think that he would try to press me and try to make a fight. I don't think he'll have trouble looking for me. I'll be right in front of him so he can see me, but I think I would win easily. Santa Cruz ain't really got no big power, so the main thing with him is he's gonna try to stay on his feet during the fight. Stevenson wants the Burchelt versus Valdez winner, but the 2016 Olympic silver medalist knows a victory over Santa Cruz would look good on his record. He's a known name, Stevenson said. He's already been in the big fights and he's got a lot of experience so i think that'll look real good on my resume that's if i can get him in the ring and tank don't get the fight if tank fights him and beats him i don't really think i would want to fight him anymore you know that both shakwa stevenson and Leo Santa Cruz. They were champions in the featherweight division. Leo Santa Cruz held the WBA title and Shakur Stevenson held and still holds, for the time being, the WBO title. At 126, that would have been a unification match. But Leo Santa Cruz has since moved up. He's a champion now at 130 pounds. And Shakur Stevenson, he means to go there. Though sadly, I don't think he gets that chance. I don't think he gets to fight Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz has been strategically guided away from the best and brightest fighters that the featherweight division has had to offer the last yeah, two years. Never fought Russell. When's the last time that Leo Santa Cruz, decorated as he might be, fought someone with a pulse? Three fourth division champion? I'll tell you right now, this guy's not about to fight Shakur. No way. Too much risk and not enough reward. I mean, the only reason he's even considering fighting Javante Davis is because they'd build that matchup as a pay-per-view. Whereas with Shakur, that, that wouldn't be the case. So I don't see Leo entertaining that kind of a fight with Shakur at all. Leo Santa Cruz couldn't have found the time the last couple of years to fight the likes of a Gary Russell, long-standing champion in the featherweight division. I hardly think he's going to take time out to fight Shakur Stevenson in the super featherweight division. The Gary Russell Jr. fight that never was and in all likelihood may never come to be, that's a fight that wouldn't have required any cross-promotional or cross-network negotiations. Both Gary and Leo, they're on the same side of the street, but you'll notice that Leo's never really been interested in that fight. Oh, he'll drop Gary's name every so often, but he never fought the guy, and he had ample time and ample opportunity to do it. So if you're not gonna fight a guy that's right there for you, on the same side of the street as you, I hardly think you're gonna fight somebody else's guy on some other side of the street. Bottom line, I don't see Leo taking on the likes of a Shakur Stevenson. I don't. Would have been a good fight, though. Oh, it would have if Leo were a little bit more ambitious, if he felt like actually making a statement. I mean, when's the last time anybody got excited over a Leo Santa Cruz fight? Uh -huh. The last, I don't know, two, three years? Yeah. I'll tell you that there may be something to what Shakur Stevenson is saying. That he has the perfect style to beat, to defeat Leo Santa Cruz. Maybe. Do you happen to agree that Shakur Stevenson has a very high ceiling, and he's only getting better. He's a young guy who's coming into his own, and more importantly, the headspace he's in. He's hungry. He wants to make a statement, whereas Leo Santa Cruz wants to do anything but make a statement. He's grown quite comfortable fighting a certain level of opposition. Yeah. Do that too long, the ginger ale tends to go flat. Yeah, yeah, Think yeah. at 130 pounds. The edge in power might actually go to Shakur Stevenson. The edge in speed as well. Perhaps. Oh, granted that Leo Santa Cruz might be the far more experienced fighter, having been a champion in four weight classes. You tell me if you honestly feel in your heart of hearts that Leo Santa Cruz has the resolve, the ambition, to beat a young, hungry fighter like a Shakur Stevenson. I'm not completely sure that Leo does. I believe that over time, Leo has become complacent. He's navigating through these weight classes quite carefully. And at that particular weight, 130 pounds, he really isn't the puncher that he was 
at 126. Leo's really never been a one-hitter quitter guy. He's a puncher, yes, but he's a puncher by way of volume, by way of activity. As far as concussive power goes, Leo's never really been one of those kinds of guys. Not at 126, and certainly not now, at 130. Whereas Shakur is still a growing boy. Leo's done all the growing he's gonna do. Where is Shakur? Standing in at about 5 foot 8, 68 inch wingspan, only 22 years old. Yeah. We haven't seen the best of Shakur Stevenson yet. He's only getting better. He's only getting bigger. He's got the kind of physical dimensions that could see him one day moving into super featherweight, lightweight, and super lightweight, I dare say. I think right here and now. Featherweight is no longer a division, no longer a weight that Shakur can make comfortably, but it's super featherweight Oh, yeah. It's going to be cool as a cucumber. Super featherweight will be a more comfortable weight class for a growing Shakur Stevenson, whereas for a Leo Santa Cruz, I think he's hit his ceiling. I don't think he can go any further than that. I mean, could you imagine Leo Santa Cruz going up there to 135, swapping punches with the likes of a Lomachenko, a Lopez, a Haney, a Campbell? These guys? I can't see it. I can't see it ending well for Leo Santa Cruz. I should say, I very much think that Leo has hit his ceiling, whereas Shakur Stevenson is still growing. That being said, Santa Cruz versus Stevenson is actually a great fight. It's a great proposition, but I don't expect that fight to get made. The politics of boxing must also be considered that, you know, I mean, fights are you expecting the PBC and top rank to make amongst themselves because they're so fucking cozy right right it's a great fucking idea but I just don't see it happening now as far as the potential matchup between Leo Santa Cruz and Gervonta Davis what is intended to be Gervonta Davis's pay-per-view debut there is a question as to whether or not this fight will actually come off due to the prescribed weight as Shakur Stevenson mentioned earlier Leo wants it at 130, and there's a big question mark as to whether or not Javante can make that weight comfortably. Because if he can't, it's going to show up in his performance. I don't know if this fight happens. Javante Davis was struggling to make 130 pounds for the longest time. He moves up in weight, he goes up to 135, and he almost blows the weight. So it's conceivable that a trip downstairs would take a lot out of him. So much so that he might actually be in danger of losing to Leo Santa Cruz at that weight. Leo knows this, and I'm pretty sure that Javante Davis and his team, they know this. There's a question as to whether or not this fight come off. I don't know. What would it take to make it? Well, money talks, doesn't it? Yeah. When it talks, people listen. I think that if they want to get Leo Santa Cruz in the ring with Javante Davis, specifically at 135 pounds, they might have to give Leo some kind of financial compensation, i.e. more money. How much more? That's up to Leo, as he's the one that would need the convincing, the compensation. I'll tell you that Javante Davis, so long as he's comfortable at the weight, has the right style to beat a mid-range to inside volume puncher like a Leo Santa Cruz. So long as Javante is fighting fit, it should be a winnable fight. It should be a winnable contest. But therein lies the dilemma, depending on where it's staged. We don't know how comfortable Javante will be or won't be. It should be understood here is this is actually very important. You can't approach a fight with a volume puncher, a guy that throws punches in bunches, a busy fighter, an active fighter. You can't approach a fight with a guy like that feeling depleted. Javante Davis, he's a lot of things, but what he's not is an activity guy. He's not a volume guy the way that Leo is a volume guy. Javante Davis is more akin to a sharpshooter. He's looking to get the guy hurt feist and then pour it on the guy. But in the mean in between time, no, Javante Davis, he's not a guy who throws punches in bunches. You're already a bit on the economic side. Already. Just imagine how you may be so affected if you approach a match with a volume puncher, like a Leo Santa Cruz, feeling depleted. It's no bueno. What is this time off as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic done to Javante Davis, who we all know regularly balloons in weight between fights? What is the state of that fighter? Right now. How has he spent the time? Yeah, it's a legitimate question. Whether you guys out there like it or not, the prescribed weight of this proposed matchup has a lot to do, could have a lot to do, with how it all works out. And Leo Santa Cruz knows that. The COVID-19 pandemic has certainly affected their plans of staging this as a pay-per-view. A pay-per-view debut for both Javante Davis and Leo Santa Cruz this summer. Is This really isn't the kind of fight that you can afford to stage behind closed doors. And it's conceivable that once boxing resumes, 
Those are the first kind of fights we're gonna see. Studio fights. Fights without an audience. Oh. This ain't the kind of fight that you can afford the stage without an audience. It's not. That at least buys Javante Davis a little bit more time to get himself to a comfortable weight comfortably. Oh. Assuming that he hasn't already. Has he? Those plans, they have to be pushed back. They have to be delayed. If the intention was to stage this as a pay-per-view debut for Javante Davis and Leo Santa Cruz, it has to be pushed back because the paying public is in no position to pay for a pay-per-view once boxing resumes. Things are going to have to get back to normal, all the way normal, before you can stage those kind of matchups. And that buys Javante Davis time. More time to get fighting fit, more time to make the weight. He has to, as Leo Santa Cruz is one of the very few options he has on the table. All the guys in his own weight class. Vasil Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, those are top-ranked fighters. Devin Haney, Luke Campbell, those are matchroom fighters. So this Leo Santa Cruz fight, it's one of the only options that Javante Davis has on the table for the near future in what is supposed to be his pay-per-view debut. This is one of the only options he has. Well, he doesn't have much of a choice. You want to debut on pay-per-view, and this is your dance partner. Your dance partner's telling you, hey, I'm not putting on my dancing shoes at 135. I'm putting them on at 130. You better well fucking better. Get fighting fit and make that weight. Because if you don't, God knows what the fuck you're going to be doing. And finally, Saunders on possibly losing the Canelo fight. It is what it is. Billy Joe Saunders, WBO super middleweight champion, was quoted as saying, I'm dealing with it, and it is what it is. I just hope the country can get back to normal and everyone stays safe. The fights will come later in the year, but I'm staying in contact with my management, MTK Global, and I'm just trying to go on as many runs as possible and stay as fit and ready as I can. They're keeping me informed. I know Eddie has to get a lot of dates together for fighters. I'll let it go on through my management, and they'll get back to me. Less of a headache. Instead of fighting for the biggest prize in boxing in Canelo Alvarez, I sat down, chilling, playing cards on the farm. I dealt with it when it happened. It's one of them. It's completely out of control. Just got to get on with it. All you can do. It's not set in stone that Billy Joe Saunders lost that opportunity to fight Canelo, in spite of what the reports are saying. It was previously anticipated that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Plans accelerated for what could be Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin 3. That rather than Canelo Alvarez making a pit stop at 168, once boxing resumed, he'd go straight into a Gennady Golovkin fight, thereby costing Billy Joe Saunders his opportunity. That's what the reports were. That's what the story was a couple of weeks ago. But the situation has since changed. Gennady Golovkin and Jonathan Banks have rejected the proposition that Canelo Alvarez will be their very next fight. They mean to go ahead with that Camille Zeremata title defense. They won't be forcibly rushed into a Canelo Alvarez rubber match. They ain't having it. That being said, maybe Billy Joe Saunders does get the Canelo Alvarez fight. Because if Canelo's not going to fight Gennady Golovkin next, as previously anticipated, who is he going to fight? It's either Billy Joe Saunders or Callum Smith. I'd say Demetrius Andre, but we know Canelo has no interest in fighting him. He doesn't. I'd mention the name of Jamal Charlo, but Jamal Charlo reportedly was already made an offer to fight Canelo Alvarez. An offer which someone on his side rejected. It's caught in Oscar De La Hoya. And until Jamal Charlo addresses those reports, addresses those statements, with some statements of his own, his denial, or the lack thereof, lends credence to the notion that he was indeed offered that opportunity and someone, perhaps not him, specifically, but someone on his side turned the fight down. So he's not on the table for Canelo. Canelo Alvarez is going to have to fight someone, presumably sometime in September, if things go back to normal in that time frame. We'll see. Billy Joe Saunders right now is just as likely as anybody else, if not more likely than some others, to get that Canelo Alvarez fight, since Canelo might not fight Triple G in his next fight. Billy's a good choice. Just as good as any, to be completely honest. Billy Joe Saunders is a two-division champion the same way that Demetrius Andre is a two-division champion, where Andre was the WBO champion at 154 and is the current reigning WBO champion at 160. Something very similar can be said about Billy Joe Saunders. He was the WBO champion at 160 and now he's the WBO champion at 168. He's a crafty southpaw the way that Andre is a crafty southpaw. Thus, as far as opponent options go, either Demetrius Andre or Billy Joe Saunders, they're interchangeable. One is just as good as the other. Pretty much. They're both two division champions. They're both undefeated. The same applies to Jamal Charlo. Not that he's on the table because he isn't, but okay. Jamal Charlo was a champion at 154. He's currently a champion at 160. He is 
also quote unquote undefeated, although there are those out there who would beg to differ as a result of having seen the Matt Korobov fight. Better still, his O is intact, and he's a two-division champion the same way that they are two division champions. None of these opponent options is head and shoulders above the others. Not really, no. All of these guys, they're interchangeable. They're all on the same boat. One is just as good as any one of the others, and it's for this reason that no matter who Canelo Alvarez picks, and I've said this before, there's going to be somebody that's not happy about it. If he picks Billy, Andre, Andre's fans, they're not going to like it. But if he picks Andre, Billy and Billy's fans, they're not going to like it. I mean, in between time, Charlo fans, they're going to keep playing a violin for that guy, throwing him a pity party without addressing. Oscar De La Hoya said they already made an offer to that guy. And somebody on his side turned it down. No matter who Canelo Alvarez picks, there's going to be someone who's not happy about it. But the truth is... These opponent options are interchangeable. None of these guys is head and shoulders above the others. Canelo Alvarez can only fight one of these guys at a time. Well, I can sit here giving you anecdotes about the stylistic matchup and the physical dimensions of a particular fighter and how that fighter would fare with the likes of a Canelo Alvarez. I myself feel that Jamal Charlo is an easier guy to figure out than either Demetrius or Billy because those two guys, they're crafty southpaws with a good set of legs, whereas, you know, Jamal, he's a little bit more straightforward. He's an orthodox fighter, one-two kind of fighter, not too much flash, not too much pizzazz. I mean, we saw how he looked in the Matt Korobov fight. This guy couldn't get out of the way of Matt's straight left hand. Matt, he couldn't miss. He was touching him. We saw that Jamal failed to put away the likes of a Brandon Adams. I mean, if you can't put a guy like Brandon Adams away, what chance do you stand of putting away the likes of a Canelo Alvarez, a guy who you'd have to put away to win the fight because you ain't winning on a cut. Just forget that fucking shit. Demetrius and Billy pose similar challenges to a Canelo that could be challenging because they're both statuesque compared to Canelo. Canelo's still a shorter, stumpier guy. They lead with their right as opposed to Canelo, who leads with his left. These aren't activity fighters, busy fighters, that would afford Canelo the same countering opportunities that more of a puncher would. Okay, these guys, they do have the ability to slow a fight down. That can be a lot more frustrating for a counterpuncher like Canelo than, say, a Jamal Charlo, who goes in there looking for a knockout. That kind of aggression is the kind of aggression that Canelo Alvarez uses against his opponents. So I do, anecdotally, of course, view either Demetrius or Billy as more challenging opponents to Canelo. But the truth of it is, any one of these three guys, even Callum Smith, to an extent, they're all interchangeable. They're all undefeated champions in their prescribed weight classes, and they all want a Canelo fight. But everybody can't get it, at least not at the same time.